Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently down 3.37% to 29,151. Ethereum down 4.65% to 1961. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. Please consider sharing and liking this video and subscribing to the channel. We would love to have you as part of our globally extended KS family. I've just taken you on a quick walkthrough of the crypto market. I do this each day to give you an understanding of how the cryptos are moving. And you can refer back to this in previous episodes, just to see how the crypto market is changing day by day. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the masterclass and NFTs. The tax software I use comes with a 20% discount, and you can always directly message me on Twitter. If you're going through a life pullback at the moment, please know that our community's love and healing thoughts are with you. You're not alone. The sun will come out again, and there's always hope. As a community, we focus on positive excellence and maintaining real wealth foundations, such as kindness, inner and outer peace, gratitude and happiness. Money is a byproduct. It comes from having the character to support success. We also focus on persistence, commitment, determination, and confidence. We realize that in life to be successful, you have to go slow to go fast, and you have to put in lots and lots of effort. Rule 219 is really important. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Being kind to yourself means that you can learn, and learning means profitability. And whatever position you find yourself in today, remember that life resets daily. There's always new opportunities in the market and also in life. In the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass, we teach people how to be crypto technical analysts and scientifically track investor attention. Investor attention is measured by price, which is reality, not future promises. You can see the crypto market has come down substantially, and that's just because of the reality of price. To crypto technical analysts, it doesn't matter what the market does because we always make in advance probabilistic choices. We know what we're going to do with our trading and our investing. If price moves for us, moves against us, or just goes nowhere, just goes flat horizontal. The first thing we do is to mark up our charts with the CTKS methodology, which is designed to capture exponential price action. Next, we look and check world events, collect probabilities, check the stock markets. And we're not so caught up on the news. We want to know what the charts are doing because the charts represent reality, not promises. If you listen to the news, you just go and hide under your bed most of the time because it's pretty negative stuff. And this is always the case. Then we look back into the crypto market, enhancing our pattern recognition, finding the market's focus and understanding opportunities reset daily before we buy or sell. And there's many, many methods to do so. We must master our emotional control and get a really good relationship with money. When we talk about real wealth and positive excellence, this is all about getting a really, really good relationship with money. And some people say, Ken, what do we need a good relationship with money for? It's just unimportant. We just need to know when to buy and when to sell. There's a huge psychological aspect to the markets that a lot of people don't realize until they're burned many, many times over. And that takes some time to go through. Just think of it this way. If you were a chef, and you hated your ingredients, you hated food deep down subconsciously. And there was another chef who loved food and deep down subconsciously saw the, all the health benefits and all the happiness that it brought people. Which chef would be the more successful and the more happy chef over time? Rule 225, Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity. The stock market's movements are very dependent on the business cycle. 
When the stock markets enter contraction, recession, of course price goes down. When they're in recovery and expansion, the prices go up. But we also know the price is always moving in a wave. It doesn't go straight up and it doesn't go straight down. It just moves in a wave. It rotates. As economic growth starts to slow, we actually see companies missing their earnings and contraction in GDP and employment, of course, and a range of other things. What you see actually in late stage expansion is a whole lot of inflationary pressure. You can see this inflationary pressures become very severe towards late stage. The US economy is currently in mid stage pushing towards expansion. A lot of people already say that the US economy is in recession. Now, why do we worry about the US economy? Because it's the largest stock market in the world. And we need to look at the gravity of the US stock market because it impacts every other stock market. Let's quickly run through the US market. We can see the VIX, the fear gauge of the market. It was coming down, but it spiked up. When fear goes down, prices go up. When fear spikes up, prices go down. So when we look at the NASDAQ 100, we can see exactly that happen. Fear was spiking up and prices were spiking down. What about bond prices? Bond prices started to come up and yields started to come down. The bond prices and bond prices and bond yields are very out of coordination at the moment. What happened with gold? What gold is telling us now is there's not much geopolitical risk around the world. But when we see what's happening in Russia and various countries trying to join NATO, you would think that gold would be higher. What have we actually seen? The gold price tried to get above this resistance. It failed. It's come back and tried to test resistance again and failed. But it's forming a lower level of support. What do we see with the US dollar? The US dollar recently rallied, overextended, then started to pull back. It's starting to rally again. All price moves in a wave. And when price gets too overextended, we need a pullback. For example, this happened with oil. Oil just shot up and up and up and everybody was expecting $300 a barrel. But then it came down from $130 to under 100 and this was on the cards when you have these exponential blow off tops you will get exponential blow downs as well but what do we actually see with oil it's in an uptrend and it's making its way up slowly and when we look at the put call ratio what do we see here things are starting to curve over which means that the bearishness is starting to leave the market Let's have a look at the global stock markets. We can see the NASDAQ right out here in front. We can see Bitcoin in that yellow line. The S&P 500 is this green line. The Dow Jones is this green. Australia is this blue. Japan is the white line. Germany is the gold line. This kind of light blue color is UK and China is red. We can see China's stock market has been going down for quite some time. In fact, it peaked around the 17th of February. You might notice this red line. That's the inverse VIX. What it means is when the VIX spikes up in the US markets, the US markets gravity tends to affect all of the other stock markets globally. And you can see this really quite clearly here. It's often good to look at sectors and we can look over the last three months to determine what sectors have been hit the most. For example, consumer discretionary, financials, communication services, information technology, industrials were all hit. But if we go the other way, what were the best performing sectors? Energy, utilities, consumer staples and healthcare just kind of just under. Just looking at a percentage is really, really difficult to understand. So I thought I'd put something new together for you. This is the energy index. So energy, utilities, consumer staples, healthcare. When you have recessionary pressure, energy comes up. 
utilities come up. Now, why is this? Because everybody needs energy and they need their utilities. Consumer staples, people need to eat. Healthcare, people still get sick and go to hospital. But consumer discretionary becomes weak. Financials become weak. Technology and industrials. And we can just keep our eye on this. Consumer staples exhibited some really, really interesting price action here. It dropped from that particular resistance all, almost all the way down to support. And when we look at the energy index, energy is trying to break out, but it's encountering a lot of resistance. We may have a bit of a turnaround in utilities, and we can see healthcare is in a downtrend. Consumer discretionary is in a downtrend as well financials is in a downtrend and this is kind of interesting in a high inflationary high interest rate environment you would expect financials would be turning around we're not seeing that at the moment technology which is absolutely critical it's the engine of our society we can see it's been coming down for a while now i'll just show you something if we were looking at technology like this people would be calling for the end of the world but we know all price moves in a wave. What actually happened? It did the unthinkable. Oh, naughty technology. It decided to move up and form a resistance level. And now what do we see? It's moving down. Do we say it's all over? Just like a lot of people would say here. No, we would say I'm waiting for it to actually rally up and test this resistance level. And then looking at industrials, you can see the same kind of thing. When people get really, really bearish, they think this price will only move in one direction and they typically sell the underlying stocks in this and then it just pumps back and they say, oh, I was wrong. And then they start to buy back just around the top and then it goes down and then they sell. You can see why it would be really, really easy to buy at the top and sell at the bottom. How are the earnings going? We can see that 1,425 companies have beaten their earnings. They've beaten them, so 69%. Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. A lot of people say, Ken, what happened to my beloved alt? It just tanked or it just exploded. A lot of the times, 99% of the time, you can just point the finger at Bitcoin and say, Bitcoin did it. Turning to the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, which is kind of like the VIX, but for the crypto market, I'm just taking you on a bit of a time travel back to the COVID sell-off, the US liquidity crisis, and Bitcoin crashed literally from 10,000 down to 3,500. We saw fear around that level of 12. That is actually what we're seeing right now. We're seeing fear of 12. So it gives you some kind of idea of how fearful the market is. When we get these kind of levels like this, it typically paints to a bottom picture, but it doesn't mean there's not more downward price momentum. What we do as professionals, we don't care about picking tops or bottoms. We just apply our rules. If you could have bought the COVID low, for example, if you could have picked up Bitcoin for just say $4,000, would you have done it? Please let me know in the comments. And if you see fear like this, overextended, would you buy as well? These are really, really important questions and very good to discuss. We have a very kind and caring community. You can reach out and discuss things with us. Let's have a look at the China miner exodus that occurred here. And that level of 12, which is the current level of crypto fear and greed. So the market is very, very fearful. But you can see the 12 here riding along the bottom. That's why I say you can't necessarily say it's the end of the price action. But it is a very, very good signal. So when you get to this kind of thing, would you say, oh, I'm going to buy just because it's 12? Or would you put more knowledge into it? I'm zooming in here on the one hour and you can see that fear and greed actually reached eight. So it's very, very fearful market. Keeping your eye on how the crypto fear and greed index moves is really, really valuable. I put out a particular poll and said, which direction do you think 
Bitcoin is headed over the next 24 hours, up to 35 or down to 25. We had about 60% of people thinking it would go down to 25. And that's in the direction of 25. That's not actually reaching 25. So what have we seen in Bitcoin's price action? The first thing that we see when we look at the overlay of the NASDAQ 100 against Bitcoin, we can see the markets aligning. Markets aligning is really, really important. They align and they go out of phase as well. You'll see financials go in phase and out of phase all the time. And what we say when Bitcoin cannot escape the stock market's gravity, that doesn't mean forever. There's a lot of rules that underpin this, and we discuss those in the masterclass. Let's have a look. What we're seeing is the NASDAQ 100 came down, Bitcoin came down, and you can see this kind of curvy action reflecting out on Bitcoin as well. So what does it actually mean? It means that we've broke several resistance levels and we're trading just around A at the moment. We may come down and test C. And if we do so, that's just because there's so much incredible fear out there at the moment. Remember the fear is retail fear. It's not smart money fear. Smart money thinks the opposite way about fear. They get really excited if such a thing is possible, when the fear becomes very, very high for retail, they are stepping in and accumulating. The retail market behaves a little bit like this. When the price is coming up, they're very, very happy. But when the price comes down, not so happy. What I try to do here each day is try to get people to think like smart money. This is retail thinking. Retail thinking, they run. For example, this was like COVID. COVID just came down off a cliff, but it was the single best buying opportunity across all markets, literally. But people panicked and they sold. And often they held on and held on and held on until pretty much the end, and then they disposed. And it's a real tragedy because we know price is always moving in a wave. Please let me know about if you were in the COVID sell-off and how you felt about that. What we see when the floor becomes clear, why is the price going up? Because somebody is buying it. Is it the retail investors and traders? It can't be because they've all left the floor. And this is an important thing to know because price can't come up by itself. It's not a magical force. It needs action. It needs flows. And what we see is as the smart money buys at bargain basement prices, people start to come back because they start to feel more and more confident. But what is happening? They're out of sync with the market. And what actually happens? They tend to buy near the top. And then when it comes down, they scatter again and they tend to sell at the bottom. This is one thing that I do everything within my power to dispel every day here because this doesn't make you money this kind of behavior and it's normal it's wired into us we don't like pain we get burned when we have losses but professionals buy at a loss and wait for things to turn around they catch the falling knives you can see it it's purely evident in this cartoon cartoons really good ones indicate the truth so what I basically see here is a lot of people getting freaked out by the market at the moment and running for the hills. And I'm not surprised because I did something that I don't traditionally do. I looked at other influencers and those other influencers on YouTube yesterday were just saying it's basically the end of the world. So many things can happen. The bottom can fall out of the crypto market. And it's really the wrong way to look at price action. When we look at price action from a professional level, we get on the right side of the percentage. You just need to think about that cartoon and you need patience to ride the, out the right side of the percentage. And so many people just want instant gratification. Instant gratification does not occur in the markets. You'll lose money. There's a fairly good stop here at this particular level, level C, but I just want to tell you where that comes from. It comes from the KS model. My live chart is available to the masterclass students in lesson TM2. Now, what do we see? This red line 
it tends to hold price very, very well. Sometimes price will come through and pierce the line, but it's a pretty good stopper. And what do we see? Where is that red line now? You just look up to this figure here and you can see it's 25 triple four 88. So we can see that this line has moved down just a little bit from 25452. I'll just adjust it now. You can see it's moved now down to 254488 and it's a dynamic live line. So it will adjust either upwards or downwards in response to price action. Please let me know in the comments, where do you think we're going? Do you think we're going into a letter? And if so, which letter in the next 24 hours do you feel is reasonable? It's not about being right or wrong. It's about having a go and trying to understand the markets. And our community is very, very loving and kind. We don't find fault with others. And then what about if, it, if you feel it's going up into the number area? What number do you think that might be? This is all for you. When you put a number or a letter, you're actually engaging, you're being active inside the market. And I can't tell you how important that actually is. Let's have a look at the longs and the shorts. We can see the shorts measured in red. The shorts have been leaving the market. Looks like they're starting to turn around and the longs have been flattening out. Could be interesting. Let's look at liquidations. One thing that you might like to keep in mind just before we look at the longs and the shorts is that this A level formed through the CTKS method is a nice support level. We would expect price to hit this and retest. And what it might retest is this particular level one if it resumes down again. But just let's check out what's happening with liquidations. Over the past 24 hours, there's been 167.56 million in liquidations across 66,911 positions. And when we look at the past 24 hours across total liquidations, 76% of those were long. And what about the past 12 hours? Whoa, nearly 79%. The past four hours, you can see how quickly things change. 53% short. What about the past hour? Nearly 64% short. What is happening here? We're actually reaching that support level, this support level at A, and we're bouncing. So we have pretty much reach a resistance level of one and come back to a support level of two. And the longs and the shorts confirm this. With this in mind, what letter or what number do you think we'll be at in tomorrow's episode? Please leave a comment on YouTube and it can just be the number or the letter. When we look at Bitcoin futures open interest, we see we're getting a bit of a kick up here. That's really positive. That's positive price momentum. And when we get that kick down, that's negative price momentum. So just bear this in mind as well. Turning to Bitcoin options for options expiring at the end of the month, we can see the max paying price is 34,000. It used to be 36, so it's coming down. One thing to bear in mind, Max Payne in crypto is not like Max Payne in the stock market. There's a thing called Max Payne theory in the stock market where Max Payne is typically the price that people or indexes tend to reach or particular stocks tend to reach. In crypto, it's something really different and you'll see that in past episodes. The other thing to think about, these puts in expectation of lower prices are like gambles. These calls in expectation of higher prices are like gambles as well. This is kind of the gambling side of the market. In the last 14 days, Tron is the least underwater of the top 20, but they're all underwater. AVAX has been the worst hit. With the top 100 over the past seven days, APE is up the most, 47.21%. MTL up nearly 37%. MANA 34%, KDA nearly 35%, AMP nearly 29%, MAKER, MKR nearly 29% as well, and CARVA 27 And when we zoom out and look at all the other cryptos, what we can see is ANC has been hit really, really badly. Having a look at DeFi, we can see total value locked or TVL is currently 109.02 billion. 
And when we look at total value locked across all chains, Ethereum is still the dominant player. And we can get a bit of an appreciation on the one day, the seven day and the one month change, as well as the total value locked. Thank you to the community members who shared this research, Cambridge Bitcoin Electricity Consumption Index. What we saw in the China miner exodus is China actually had its miners leave the country and now it's controlling 21.11% of the hash rate. They've come back with a vengeance. And to put that into context, the US controls 37.84%. So this is really important news to understand. Russia is also considering legitimizing Bitcoin and crypto as a legal form of payment. And recently in Hong Kong, what we found is the court there said that Bitcoin is legal, even though the mainland says that if you touch it, you'll get your hand slapped. It's definitely a very interesting world that we live in, but there is no cons consideration at all. China is coming back into the crypto market. And please bear in mind, crypto is the new oil. It's really important to understand this. It is a vital, economically vital component of all economic systems, and it will become so. But a lot of people don't understand that. This is exactly the reason that the UAE is seeking to grab adoption in crypto. It wants to take the financial center away from London and Paris and New York and put it in Dubai. These are really important things to understand. There's a tectonic shift in the financial landscape and crypto is the new oil. Enhancing your pattern recognition is really, really important. So how do we do that? We actually look at Bitcoin's gravity. I've just come down to the 15 minute time frame because I want to give you an understanding of how powerful this gravity is. You can see Bitcoin here. Now that Bitcoin price action is this blue line. You can see it very clearly in Binance coin. It's literally overlaid on the 15 minute with Ethereum. They're moving very, very much together. And this is what you'll find in crypto. Every alt will actually follow the directional bias of Bitcoin 99% of the time, but it will do so to greater and lesser percentage degrees. Let's have a look at Binance coin. Binance coin, you can see, is following Bitcoin's gravity. This is really important. If you want to invest in Binance coin or you want to trade Binance coin, you have to understand what Bitcoin is doing. If you don't understand this fundamental, you'll get it wrong. What about Ethereum? You can see how Ethereum and Bitcoin are basically overlaid. But look at the price differential. You're talking about 28941 compared to Ethereum, $1,948. But look how much the association is. This is really important to keep in mind. That's why if you just drill into one crypto or you hear people saying, for example, that this particular crypto is going to do things opposite to what Bitcoin is doing, you have to be really careful of that because we can see day in, day out, that is not the truth of the crypto market. That's why we look at reality. We don't look at promises. XRP following Bitcoin's gravity. You can see it. They all do it. ADA, Cardano following Bitcoin's gravity. What about Solana following Bitcoin's gravity as well? What about Doge following Bitcoin's gravity? What about DOT? Same. A lot of people think that cryptos can become independent of Bitcoin. There are certain times in the cycle that yes, they can definitely become independent, but there is always directional correlation. And we're seeing a lot of association right now. Looking at the community favorites, how does Bitcoin's price action on the 15 minute affect NIA? NIA is moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity. Of course, it does different percentages up and different percentages down, but it's still moving in alignment. What about Matic? You can see it's pretty much sinking. What about Icon? Sinking in synchronization, <laughs> not sinking to the bottom of the depth, but in synchronization. What about Veracity, VRA? We can see VRA. Let me just put that to auto. 
we can see VRA is actually moving in alignment as well. What about Rose moving in alignment? Rune moving in alignment? IOTA moving in alignment? IOST moving in alignment? This is really important to understand. If you understand the power of Bitcoin, you understand, and it just makes it so easy to invest or trade in your alts. And we know all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell. So you must know how to trade. If you're an investor with no knowledge of how to trade, guess what's going to happen? This is going to happen. And this is not what you want. You don't want to be on the floor or you don't want to be leaving the floor when everybody is taking off. People talk about don't catch falling knives. Of course, because the institutions are catching the falling knives. Smart money is catching the falling knives. But I think that the world can be a fairer place. If there's much more knowledge, the markets will become much more stable and everybody can participate. And that's what it's all about. We shouldn't be in these hype cycles. And so much emotional turmoil and stress is always hitting the crypto market. Indeed, it hits every market, but crypto is particularly brutal. You don't want to be running as the price has bottomed out. You want to be there and you don't want to be coming back in when the price is about to go down again. This is why I say all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell because it's a fact. Turning to the community favorites in the metaverse, what do we see here? Sand is following Bitcoin's gravity. What about Axie? Axie has been quite interesting of late. You would have noticed that Axie has been quite positive as Bitcoin has been coming down. This divergence is something that we look for. We love divergences when we get them and they're hard to spot, they're hard to find. But Axie is exhibiting strength. What's the reality of this? There's something going on inside Axie that is actually driving the price upwards. What is that? Potential whale-based accumulation. So just keep your eye on Axie. What do we see in Decentraland, MANA? It's just moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity at the moment. What about Gala, moving in alignment? Engine Coin, moving in alignment. Ape, also moving in alignment, but we're also seeing a bit of power here. As Bitcoin has come down, Ape is going up. So Axie and Ape look quite interesting. And what about Chili's? What's Chili's doing here? Naughty Chili's. It took off and overextended that particular arc of Bitcoin's price action up. There was obviously some sort of new spike. And then what happened as Bitcoin came down, the entire crypto market came down and Chili's came down with it. Just always bear this in mind. New spikes can be fun, but they're very, very short lived. If it goes up the wall, it will come down the stairs. Let's have a look at SLP. SLP is following Bitcoin's gravity, but it's showing a degree of strength here. And that's pretty good. Good on you, SLP. Looking across these top cryptos and the community favorites, which ones do you think are the most interesting and why? It's always really good to discuss these things. And where do you feel Bitcoin's price action is going to by tomorrow? Do you think it will be a letter? Do you think it will be a number? And then which letter or number do you think it will be? Please let me know in the comments. Life is always waiting for you to be ready for abundance. It all starts in the mind. Your past is the past. Just take any painful memories of the past and burn them and be like the phoenix and rise from those ashes of your painful story. You're not your story. You're a unique, completely unique human being and you're here for a positive excellence reason. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video and also subscribing to the channel. We'd love to have you as part of our globally extended KS family. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers and also to the CTKS ambassadors for mentoring masterclass students. And of course, a very big thank you to you for watching and for being part of our global KS family. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, 
7 days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the Masterclass, our NFTs, the tax software I use, there's a 20% discount in there, TradingView I use for charting, a lot of really, really good websites, and you can always directly message me on Twitter at any stage. Please just click the link in the description of this video. I'd like to also thank the very kind and generous community members who've reached out and bought me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash crypto trading KS. A big thank you to Raptor Zell and of course Wrecked. This coffee is for Kate. What a champ she is for letting you spend all of that time on us. Congratulations to both of you. I wish you all the best. Thanks so much, Wrecked. <laughs> Kate, Kate and I got married recently. We're still on our honeymoon. So thank you everyone for your kind words. And someone, best info on YouTube, still water. Enjoy your honeymoon. Thank you. You really need to take a break. Thank you, my friend. And Albert, all the best, my friend. Thanks, Albert. All the best to you. Vicente, congratulations to you and Kate. I wish you all the best. Thank you for your continuous effort. I watch your videos every day as I evolve and expand my knowledge. I've seen this latest downturn as an opportunity rather than a worry. The advantage of the CTKS Masterclass. Thank you, Vicente. Very nice. And to someone, thank you, my friend. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.